It's a food source enjoyed through the Hawaiian archipelago for centuries. Many chants, proverbs, and legends have been written about it. Its nutritional benefits are numerous, and it can be consumed in many different ways. This is ulu, Hawaiian breadfruit, the canoe plant of ancient Hawaii. So if you go way back, kind of Borneo, Indochina areas, uh, getting into Papua New Guinea um, is kind of the center of diversity of the genus itself, Artocarpus genus. And a little bit of debate, but it's kind of believed that in Papua, breadfruit was actually developed. So there you have a lot of bread nut, which is kind of the ancestor, you know, the mo'oku hao of the ulu. In Papua New Guinea, you know, they started using the bread nut a lot, probably started selecting varieties, getting fewer and fewer seeds. When people moved further westward and into kind of Vanuatu, New Caledonia areas, that's where the diversity of breadfruit really started exploding. So places like Samoa. Uh, for Hawaii in particular, it seems pretty certain that the initial colonizers didn't bring breadfruit with them, or maybe they tried and, and it didn't make it. And in Hawaii, you know, both through uh, Mo'olelo as well as through archeological evidence, it seems that um, uh, people returned um, to the South Pacific specifically to go get breadfruit. So the most famous story is of a uh, kahai who went to Upolu to retrieve breadfruit and bring it to Hawaii. You know, there's an ancient valley in Tahiti called Upolu. Um, some people say he went there. The main island of Samoa is Upolu, so some people say he went there. Based on the variety, our Hawaiian ulu is much more similar to the Tahitian varieties than the Samoan varieties in general. And then there's conflicting mo'olelo, you know, some say he brought it back to Upolu uh, on Kohala. Our ancestors only had, you know, 25, 30 crops in their, in their toolkit, you know. And so I think every one of our crops in that sense was, was essential, you know, had a strong role to play. But breadfruit in particular, extremely productive, very fast growing, grows in a lot of marginal habitat. Like the farm here, where it's typically too rocky to do your kalo or sweet potato, um, you know, and the ulu thrives. So by having, you know, a broader diversity of plants that lets you have a broader diversity of agricultural systems, it lets you grow in a broader diversity of places. And so every one of our kupuna crops was, was essential in that aspect. In South Kona, we have a lot of young rock. It's actually extremely fertile. It's releasing a lot of nutrients. I know it doesn't look like it to us, but they're weathering very rapidly uh, when they're young. And so they're releasing calcium and phosphorus and potassium into the soil every time it rains. So all these guys who go and spray pesticides and keep it all nice and clean, it's actually horrible for the nutrient cycle. So here, you know, we grow a whole range of different things. We're not weed Nazis. Um, you know, we let the weeds come. All those things help capture those nutrients, hold them. Um, and then when those plants die, that adds um, those nutrients back in. And it also adds a lot of carbon um, on top of the rock. And carbon is very chemically sticky. So carbon is really good, organic matter is really good at holding those nutrients that are released from the rocks. They're a very hardy plant, um, you know, take very little care. They have a very shallow root system that spreads broadly. So that anchors it pretty strongly. It allows it to grow in very shallow soils, um, allows it to grow on very steep slopes, rocky areas. And of course they do fine in nice, flat, beautiful, deep soil too. <laughs> So again, the bread nut, you cut open the ancestor of breadfruit and there's big, huge seeds um, look like chestnuts and they're edible too. So the bread nut is a common food crop as well. As you come westward in the Pacific um, and by the time you get to Tahiti and Hawaii, virtually all the ulu varieties are sterile and don't produce seed. All the Hawaiian ulus, the true Hawaiian variety are all clones of each other. You probably literally had one plant come to Hawaii and from that one plant you kept cloning and cloning and cloning um, and grow you know for instance the huge breadfruit belt of Kona that way. So today a lot of other techniques are used you know air layering is very common. I find breadfruit very easy to to air layer. Harvest season is almost year-round. They certainly like most fruits are seasonal so kind of August, September, October 
A lot of places you'll get a second season uh, late winter, and then we even do see other places get a third season in May. Through the, the you know, 12 trees that we have, you know, we get a couple thousand pounds uh, a year. Its nutritional benefits are many. It's very starchy, carbohydrates. So, I mean, it's a staple food. It's, it's like a, a potato or your rice or cassava, but it is a fruit. And because it's a fruit, it's higher in most vitamins and minerals. It has a, a relatively low um, glycemic index, so it's um, very good for diabetes, um, people who, who have trouble controlling their blood sugar. It is gluten-free, so for people who have celiac disease or just who want to eat gluten-free, um, it's a good source of uh, carbohydrates. My favorite way is still just kind of a twice-cooked, um, so steam it. Um, take that out, kind of do a rough mash with onion and spices and leonparians and make little patties and then you pan fry those, um, little like ulu burgers. Throughout Polynesia there's a lot of sayings equating ulu to wealth um, or well-being, you know, saying that if you plant an ulu tree you've fulfilled your obligation to feed your family. For Noah, the goal is now to spread the word on the many benefits of ulu. There's been a lot of effort from the Breadfruit Institute, from Ho'oulu Ka'ulu, to uh, re-educate and um, revitalize the, the breadfruit. Uh, a big hurdle is that education, is, you know, working with people, you know, working with chefs to, you know, teach them how to use it and what you can do with it and, you know, teaching people ways that they can prepare it at home and, you know, teaching farmers how to grow it. You know, 200 years ago, the amount of ulu grown just in Kona um, is, you know, about equivalent to the amount of starches we import to Hawaii. You know, if we can bring back you know, even just a part of what we had a couple hundred years ago as far as breadfruit production, um, I think would go a huge way into Hawaii's, you know, food security and local food production. It is a phenomenal food source. Um, it's, it's much more environmentally friendly than most of our annual crops. It's extremely productive. It's healthier from a human nutrition standpoint. And it's something that should be playing a strong role in our local food systems. You know, it just feels clean and healthy, and um, I always feel a lot better after I come out, you know, of, of working on the farm. And, yeah, oh, it's a good life. <laughs>